In this short video, I will go through concepts of sample space and events uh, and unions and intersections of events. So let me illustrate that uh, graphically. Here we have a big area S graphically represents graphical square represents S and that is our sample space. And what does that mean here? It tells us that this area sort of represents all values of x which are larger or equal to zero. Right? So just imagine all of this. We could also think of sort of a, a line because that's just uh, all uh, positive or non-negative uh, numbers, but it's easier to think about this as, as an area. And here we have four events which are defined on that sample space. So here, for instance, that first one means event E is the event that X takes a value between four or larger than four and smaller and equal to 10. So anything between four and 10, but not including four. F is defined in a similar matter that uh, F is the event that X takes a value between seven and 17, but not including seven. And actually let's jump to H it's defined in the same way that um, event H is the event that X takes a value between 9 and 13, but not including 9. G is slightly different because here the event is that X takes just a value larger than 15. All right. So firstly, let's try and represent event E in that sample space. Well, E is what we call a subset of S. So we could just draw it anywhere here. And I'll just draw, it's just common that we represent that with circles, okay? So that is E here. So it's just a subset of all the values in our sample space fall into event E, only those between four and 10. So let's also represent F and we'll do that in blue. So I just need to quickly change the color here, F. Now we need to think about how to represent this. F is also a subset of S. But now importantly, you see there's some overlap here. For instance, the value of 8 is both in E and in F. So that means we'll represent that graphically by drawing that event F such that there is an overlap between E and F. So that is F. Um, that isn't a very nice circle anymore. It's not important that it's a beautiful circle. Importantly, we have some area here which is an overlap. And that area here we call the intersection between E and F. And in this case, because there is an intersection, that is not empty. Okay, so the intersection between E and F. So let's write that here. I'll write it in, in blue. It doesn't matter if that's, oh, let's do it. The intersection is this, and it's the intersection between E and F. Okay, that is this area here. Okay, then we also have, and um, I should perhaps just use a different color for this. Let me use purple. Okay, we also have this area here, let me see whether I can illustrate that. This area here. So basically all the values which are either in E or in F, that is the union between E and F. Okay. So we've explained union and intersection. Let me just clean something here. So here we now have E again, and let's think about E and a different event G. Okay, so E is all the numbers between four and 10, not including four, and G is all the numbers larger than 15. So these two have no common values. Okay, so if you wanted to draw G, we would have to draw G somewhere, let's say here. 
And here you can see that the intersection between E and G is equal to the null set. We sometimes indicate that here because there is no intersection. Okay, so that is very, very important to understand. So let's also think of event, let's draw event F. So that is plu. So let's think about how we would want to draw that. So F has an intersection with E because a value, for instance, we had discussed that before, of 8 contains both. So let's draw F and how does F relate to G? Well, F goes all the way up to 17 and G starts from 15 or just above 15. So F has an intersection with both E and G. So here we have F. Okay. And now let's also think about, lastly, event H, which is in CLAC. How would we draw this? So H has an intersection with E, because, for instance, 9.5 is both in H and in E. So we have an intersection here. H does not have an intersection with G, because that h only goes up to 13 and x is only numbers larger than 15. And let's think about how h and f relate to each other. Well, all outcomes which are in h are also in f because all numbers between 9 and 13 are automatically also between 7 and 17. So how we control h here is has an intersection with e no intersection with G and all its area is inside F. Okay, so for instance, what does that mean here? The intersection between H and F is just H again. All the values in H are the intersection between H and F. And what about the union between H and F? Well, that is F, okay, because an outcome in either H and F is the same as an outcome in F, okay? So this hopefully helps you to understand how different events relate to each other and how we make these graphical representations.